What's up guys, welcome to Munchkins Gaming, where we take your gaming to the next level. This is Munchkins logging in to bring you another Decidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video, and welcome back to another, another Should You Pull video, where I give you my opinions whether you should pull or not pull for certain banners com coming to Decidia Opera Omnia. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the Arciella event banner, which you can grab her EX alongside with Precious EX weapon as well. You can get both their 15 and 35 CP, and the third wheel for this one is going to be Renoa, which you can grab her 15 and 35 CP weapon. Now before we start, like and subscribe if you haven't already. It does help my channel, and I really do appreciate all the support that you guys give me. Now without further ado, let's start this video. Look, let's start this off with Prisha's rework. She's going to be getting a rework when this event goes live. Now, there's a lot of things to go through in terms of Prisha's rework, but the gist of it is all of her abilities will now have HP damage. And I think for the most part, that's all you really need to know. Uh, increase in brave attack, um, brave potency, and a couple of um, max brave overflow here and there as well. But overall, the biggest thing and the biggest change is going to be all the HP attacks attached to all her abilities now, which is really, really great. If you want to go through more in detail, uh, I feel like you should go and check out CJDB. That is where I get all my information. I just don't want to go read through all this stuff, which is going to take a while, and we don't really want that. So now let's move on to her EX weapon or EX ability called the Glance Faust. Now the, this gives her the EX ability Nullifying Drop Kick. This is a, an old EX, so this does a 4 hit melee brave plus HP attack. This also ignores defense and the stolen brave can overflow up to 200% of her max brave. This also extends the duration of all her self granted buffs by 5 turns. This, however, does have a slow recast speed, and at 1 out of 3, this increases the brave damage dealt. At 2 out of 3, this will now grant her a medium max brave up for 5 turns, and at 3 out of 3, this increases the recast speed for nullifying dropkick. Now, if you do decide to realize this weapon at 0 out of 3, this will now have a 6 hit brave hit count and increasing its brave potency. It also extends the duration of existing buffs again by 5 turns. Now, this also inflicts a fire wind holy resistance down debuff on all enemies for 4 turns. At 1 out of 3, this smartly raises the her max brave and her attack. At 2 out of 3, when the quest starts, she will have a small max brave up, a small physical attack up buff for 5 turns, and also her brave attack and HP attack will have their plus variance for 10 turns, and also filling up the her EX gauge to its max. Finally, at 3 out of 3, when you're using Nullifying Dropkick, this now becomes a 6 hit melee brave plus HP attack that ignores defense and is ex executed twice. This will have an increase in brave potency and will give you no consume ability on the next turn. The bonus for you're getting for this one is called weak attack boost up short when hitting target's weakness. Use, this raises your max brave and attack by 10% for 3 turns. Okay guys, so after hearing all this inf information regarding her rework and of course her realization, how much ingots should you be spending on Prish if she's a character that you really want to invest in? I honestly feel like you need really need to go 3 out of 3 for Prish. My main reason for this is you want to make sure you get the most out of her EX ability. Because it does have a slow recast speed to begin with, it does increase once, so I would say it would be in slightly slow, would it be? Or would it be normal? I, I honestly don't know how that really works. But you do get only one increase of recast speed, so you can't really spam this EX ability as much as you want. So whenever it's up, you really want to make the most out of it, really. Uh, you probably can get away at 2 out of 3, but 3 out of 3 is really the way to go because Prish is a DPS character and you really want to do as much DPS as possible. Now, the other thing is, what I really like about her is, of course, she, she now has that debuff for um, 
fire, wind, and holy resistance down. This is going to be a frame debuff. I think I should clarify that. This is going to be a frame debuff that is inflicted to all enemies, even though she's only technically hitting one enemy. So it's really, really nice uh, for her because all her kit revolves are around elements. Um, and as we all know, there are some fights where some elements are, aren't going to be very useful. So if she can, you know, put a resistance down, that is definitely going to help. So, yeah, overall, 3 out of 3 for me. Um, again, more damage, the better. Uh, you can probably get away with 2 out of 3, but I would really not recommend that. Um, because, honestly, that increase in potency plus executing twice, you, you just get the most out of this her EX this way. Okay, guys, it's time to move on to Arciela's kit. This is all going to be with abilities, all her abilities and her passives included. Starting off with her first ability, Ascension and Expunge Magic. This will cancel Dissension, which is the, a buff that she will have if you use her ability too. Uh, this will grant her Ascension instead. This triggers Expunge, Expunge Magic, which is going to be a 2-hit AoE Magic Brave Attack plus AoE HP Attack. And the damage will be split amongst all targets. This will recover the party's Brave by 50% of the HP damage dealt with a limit of 20% of their max HP. The t this will now remove all the buffs from the target as well and will give herself a buff called Fast Cast. Now while Ascension is active, the Brave Attack will turn to Brave Attack plus Ascension which basically increases the party's Brave by 40% of the initial Brave and will do a Magic Brave Attack. This will give herself two turns of Fast Cast once again. HP attack becomes Harmonic Displacement, which is a 3-hit Magic Brave plus HP attack. This will increase the Allies Brave by 50% of the HP damage dealt. This will give her 2 turns of Fast Cast as well. Now let's go over Ascension and Fast Cast as buffs. Now Ascension is going to raise her own Max Brave by 20% and restoring the party's Brave by 20% of the initial Brave. This also raises the party's attack initial Brave by 20%. Now, Fast Cast is going to restore the party's Brave back to their initial Brave within one turn after dealing an HP damage dealt or getting broken. Now, once you get the extension for this one, this will have one extra usage, so that will be in total of four, I believe. And when you're using ex uh, Ascension and expunge, expunge Magic, this will now increase the Brave hit count to five, increasing its Brave potency by 100% will have a 150% max brave overflow and will, you will have the ascension buff for 5 extra turns. Now when you're using your brave attack plus ascension, this will now increase the brave hit count to 2 and increasing the brave total total brave potency of this by 60% and increasing the brave gain by initial brave by 30%. Now when you're using Harmonic Displacement, her HP attack, this will increase the Brave Potency by 30% and will have a 120% Max Brave Overflow limit. Now if you do have her 15 CP passive, this will increase the Brave Potency by another 100%, increasing the Brave Damage dealt by 60% on a single target. The recovery will increase um, up to like 50% of the HP damage dealt, and they increase the HP recovery by 20%, and giving the accession effects plus extra 20%. And you will get extra fast cast duration, increase the brave gain, initial brave for her her Brave Attack plus Ascension, and for the Harmonic Displacement, the same thing, increase in potency and increase in duration for Fast Cast. Okay, next up is her ability to Dissension and Sight Unseen. So this cancels the Ascension buff and gives her the Dissension buff. This triggers Sight Unseen, which is a 2-hit AoE Magic Brave Attack plus single target HP attack. This will deal 20% splash damage to non-targets, and all targets will have a Max Brave and Speed Down debuff for 6 turns and will have 1 turn of HP attack disabled. While Dissension is active, she will have the plus variant for her Brave Attack, Dissension. This is going to be an AoE Magic Brave Attack, which will have a 100% potency. Increase the Brave Damage dealt by 50% when attacking debuff targets, and all targets will have 6 turns of Max Brave Down and Speed Down. 
her HP attack will turn into Darkest Hour, which is going to be 5 hit magic brave attack plus HP attack. This also increases the brave damage dealt by 50% when attacking debuff targets and will deal 10% splash damage to non-targets. Now the Ascension is slightly obviously different from Ascension. This will still raise her own max rate by 20%, her attack by 10% and raises the party's attack by 20% and will lower the enemy's speed by 5%. Now the max brave and speed down debuffs uh, will be only 10%, so they are going to be the one version, I believe. So her HP attack disable will obviously prevent use of any HP attacks. Now let's take a look at the extension. You will get one extra usage of this again, and increasing the brave hit count to five once again, and we'll have a increase in brave potency, increase in max brave overflow to 150%, and increase the HP damage dealt to non-targets by 30%. Now, so that will be 50% in total, and increasing the duration for the dissension, and the brave hit count increase on dissension brave attack plus increase in potency and darkest hour increase in potency, and we'll have. Have a 120% max brave overflow as well. Now the 35 CP is going to be increased all throughout at once again. Uh, increase in potency, increase in, in damage dealt to a single target, increase in dissension buff. So max brave will be having uh, extra 20% and attack up 10%. Uh, the party will have extra 20%. Uh, attack up and the enemy speed down plus extra 5% and 20% effects on max brave and speed down. The HP attack disable will have extra 2 duration, so a total of 3, which is really amazing. And you know, just again, increase in max brave and speed down effects 20% for her brave attack plus. Uh, and the darkest hour will have increase in potency and the HP damage dealt to non targets increase by 10%. Now let's talk about her additional ability called Ability or Recovery Attack All. This basically gives one extra usage for both her Ascension and Descension uh, attack abilities and will have increase in the party's attack by 5%. Now if you do get the Bloomstone, this will have an increase in effect duration plus 4, so a total of 9 turns. Alright guys, now let's move on to her EX weapon and her EX ability. Now her EX weapon is called the Tamist Ring and will give her the EX ability Nakuel's Vengeance and I hope I pronounced that right, Final Fantasy stuff once again. This will recover the party's HP by 20% of their max HP and will deal 8 hit AoE Magic Brave attack plus AoE HP attack. This will have increased brave damage dealt when there's only a single target and the overflow can go up to 150% of her max brave and this will have a split damage of the HP uh, between all targets. This will grant her the heirloom buff which basically increases her max brave in attack and restores the party's brave by 40% of their in the initial brave, however this does not stack. This does have a slightly uh, fast recast speed at 1 out of 3. This increase, increases the brave damage dealt at 2 out of 3 increasing the duration for heirloom and at 3 out of 3 increasing the recast speed for her EX ability. Okay guys, so if you do decide to realize this weapon, at 0 out of 3 you will have increase in brave potency and increase in the stolen brave overflow. At 1 out of 3 increasing the max brave in her attack. At 2 out of 3 when the quest starts she will have the heirloom buff at the start of the quest. And at uh, on her first turn she won't use, uh, she will not consume an ability count and she, she will have no action delay. This will not increase the turn count once again. However this still does decrease the friend support and summon action count. And finally, at 3 out of 3, this will have increase in potency once again, increase in the stolen brave overflow, and this will now also increase the party's brave by 20% of the HP damage dealt. Now the bonus we are getting for this one is break hit brave region short when breaking a target or attacking a broken target. This will be a 3 turn party wide effect which increases your, their own brave by 10% of their own initial brave at the start of the turn. Okay guys, so after hearing all this information regarding Arciella's kit, and of course her realization, how much ingots should you be investing on her? For me personally, I'm going 3 out of 3. <laughs> but you can definitely get away with 2 out of 3 with this one. Um, she does get more increase in potency and overflow on her 3 out of 3. 
However, it, it, her main job is not so much to do as much damage as she can. I mean, all, all, of course, all characters try to do that. However, she's not really a DPS character to begin with. So you can get away with just, you know, um, at 2 out of 3. Um, there's really not much addition at 3 out of 3 apart from, of course, again, being a Brave Battery, an extra Brave Battery option for her kit. So, I do like um, 2 out of 3 as my minimum uh, re recommendation. However, I am definitely going to 3 out of 3 her. So, uh, overall, I like her kit. She's flexible. She has two stances, a uh, a buffer and a debuffer stance. I really like the HP silence, and that's that's gonna be for three turns, man. Um, you know the ones that we got so far from Kefka, I believe, was only for one turn, and you know to a lesser extent, like silence can do that as well, but it, it can only silence magic brave attacks. If so, if there's a magic HP attack only. You won't be able to cancel or prevent that HP attack from happening, and that only lasts for one turn, and for that's from Agrius. So that that extension on the HP silence is really really good, and I will be maxing her out definitely. Okay, guys. So final question: Should you pull if it if I haven't said so already? It's a big, massive yes for me. Uh, pull on this banner is definitely going to be worth it. Um, obviously, you're going to try and grab Arciella. Uh, Prish is so-so in my opinion, but Arciella, you know, it's worth using your gems trying to get for Arciella. She's definitely going to help you out in clearing all those chaos difficulty fights. And of course, she's going to be pretty essential in the next Dimensions End as well. Um, she's going to make that a lot easier. So um, if you want to make sure you can clear that as soon as possible, just try and grab her. Um, anyway, guys, I think I'll end the video right here. Please do remember to click like and subscribe once again if you haven't already. It does help my channel and, of course, helps with the YouTube algorithm as well. Hit that notification bell as well if you don't want to miss any videos from my channel. I uh, really do appreciate it. And, of course, follow me on Facebook and on Twitter at Munchkins Gaming. Leave down in the comments below which one are you after. Are you after Arciella or Prish? Uh, hopefully majority of you are actually after Arciella, um, but let me know down in the comments below if you do like Prish um, and why you're going to grab her uh, more than Arciella or make her the prize for this banner for you. Anyway, this is Munchkins logging off. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next level.